Hey there everyone, and welcome to a very quick socially distant video. This isn't a full devlog because I do those text-based, but I wanted to show you guys something that I implemented into the game in 24.05. It's probably going to be controversial, but I feel like m most people will like it when it's fully implemented, and when it's used in its rightful state. Um, so, what is it? Well, if you've been paying attention to the screen, you may have noticed these occasional flashes of, of white bands going across the screen and they appear at seemingly random like there was one right there you might have you might have missed it they appear basically a frame or a few frames at a time and they appear at different thicknesses and at, at different spots along the um height of the screen what is going on there you might be wondering Oh my god, Richie, that is some nasty-ass glitching right there. And you'd be right. But it's not a glitch, it's actually a feature that I implemented in the game. It's a post-processing effect that I wrote for Unity that actually recreates, funnily enough, a glitch that I've been having on my Linux system. Um, I'm, I, I apologize that there's not much to show you guys. In, in, in terms of visuals. This is going to be me talking through what's going on here. I am going to show some code, though. Basically, on my system, traditionally I use Wayland, I use Plasma Wayland, and Plasma Wayland is great except for some little bugs here and there with accessibility that I have open on the Bugzilla and I'm waiting on KDE to fix. Unfortunately, while those are still issues, um, I need to be able to use my computer, and so temporarily I've switched back to Xorg. Still on Plasma 6, but on Xorg. Same APU, but on Xorg. And Xorg is Xorg. Um, and while I've been on Xorg, I've been noticing this same kind of flashing white bands across both of my monitors every now and then. Usually when my system is under load. I don't know what's causing it. Um, it, it, it doesn't happen often, but, it's, but it happens whenever I have the game running or whenever I'm compiling stuff, or basically when my system's really busy, I will have these flashing white bands across my screens pretty much every few seconds. And the effect was really annoying on my desktop system, but it is a pretty neat effect when you think of what causes it. Remember that it is caused by my system, or at least it happens when my system is under load. So it made me think that in socially distant, whenever you're being hacked, obviously that's going to mean your system is under some sort of stress. There's malware running on it. It's being hacked. And I figured while you have malware on the system, or when it's being hacked, or when something dramatic is happening in the game that involves your system being under load, I thought I'd be neat to implement that kind of glitching effect to kind of make you subtly realize that something's going on in your system and you might want to, you know, deal with it. Because these glitches can be quite distracting. Now, they don't prevent you from reading the game. You can still navigate it and it doesn't affect me from using my system on Xorg. But they are still definitely noticeable and definitely annoying. Um, Right now, they just happen constantly. It's it's not integrated with the game's API. It's just a shader. But I think that it's a pretty neat effect. My plan is to use it in a panic state, which is what state the game goes into when you're being hacked or when something dramatic is going on. Um, like being... Uh, like... Oh my god. I'm very tired right now. Even though I sound a little energetic, I am definitely tired. <laughs> I stumbled on my words. But the idea is... Yeah, when your system is under stress, or when you're under stress as a player, you're going to see those white bands. It's kind of a status effect type thing. Now that that's out of the way, let me show you guys the code. Um, so, um, that flash of Richie was not part of the game. That was my desktop background showing up. Yes, it's Richie from Pokemon. Deal with it. Anyway, um, so, uh, this is the shader right here. I'm zooming in on it, and it's not too far off of what you basically learn by default when um, when learning how to use the Unity post-processing stack. It's written in HLSL, but this is this is how it's going to work. So, um, it's basically a fragment shader. That's all it is. I will be adding other glitch effects whenever your system's really damaged, 
Uh, but this is the main one that, that you're gonna see, and it's just the Fragment Hater, and what it does is, first we sample the color of the, s of, well, the screen, because this is a post-processing effect, and it happens on the screen instead of on a surface or anything like that. So we grab the, uh, we grab the color of the current texel, and, you know, that's pretty standard boilerplate Fragment Hater stuff. Um, and... Then we grab some other stuff. Uh, first of all, we have this um, float, and I probably spelled it wrong, but thickness oscillation. And this is equal to the result of sine of underscore time pl or plus one over two, or all over two. So what this does is, well, if we actually go to Desmos graphing calculator, we can kind of visualize what this is doing. Um, so desmos.com slash calculator. Flashbang warning. Uh, we're gonna get flashbanged by Desmos because I have my dark reader set not to uh, uh, <laughs> mess with Desmos because of years of doing high school algebra and stuff like that and needing that to work. But um, the first equation is going to be y equals uh, sine of x plus 1 all over 2. Uh, nope. Uh, all over 2. And what we end up with um, is this waveform here. So basically it's your standard sine wave, but crucially it does not go into the negatives. It goes between 0 and 1. Um, and I believe that's identical to the oscillation threshold that... or o oscillation of the thickness. Yeah, so yeah. That's the first wave that we generate here. The next one we generate is it's called y, and it is sine of time times 20 plus 1 all over 2. So let's graph that. Um, so y equals sine of x. In this case, x is representing time times 20 plus 1 and then all over 2. And then we end up with another wave that is significantly more frequent. But as you can see, occasionally these two waves uh, do actually quite a lot. They do meet. Uh, but that's not important yet. Uh, the next wave is going to be this time wave here. I didn't know what else to call it, but th these are all time-based waves. And this is cosine of time multiplied by 60 plus 1 all over 2. Let's see what that does. Um, so, y equals cosine of x times 60 plus 1 over 2. I am really fun at parties, aren't I? Um, that's why I don't go to them. So as you can see, we get the, these three waves uh, on the screen right now. And if I zoom in on it, um, what you're going to notice is um, we have a lot of this interference between the, t the three waves. Uh, this really, really wide wave um, uh, crosses over all of them pretty much constantly. But every now and then, these two shorter waves also cross over each other. Uh, you can see that it that they've crossed over about here, um, right here, and then kind of over here they've crossed over, and uh, down there, and down there. So they cro cross over quite a lot, and that's how this works. Um, so, let's look at the rest of the code. Um, so, if we go further down, we're gonna have this thickness variable, which is right now hard-coded to 0 0.05, and then multiplied by thickness oscillation. That means that over time, the the white bands will get thicker and thinner as, as time progresses, so that they're not all the same thickness, and that's, that's the same kind of effect that I was having with X11, um, where the bands definitely appear consistent, or cons consistently, but not at the same thickness. So I recreated that by having it bound by a sine wave over time. Then we have 
this float band start and float band end, uh, all they do is they take the value of y and band start um, uh, subtracts half of the thickness and then band end adds half of the thickness. So we end up with this region defined by band start and band end. Uh, and then we have this tolerance variable. This is just to do a floating point um, equality check because if you know anything about floating point numbers, you cannot do a quality checks because it's completely unreliable. This allows me to check if two numbers are equal by, well, um, looking at the code here, we're doing, we're, we're taking y and we're subtracting time wave and we're getting the absolute value of that and we're checking if it's below or equal to the tolerance values. This is how you do an, an inexact or inexact equality check with floating points that is much more reliable than trying to deal with whether the fact that 0 is equal to 0 0.0000000004 because it's not even though sometimes it might be but it might not be it's weird and floating points are just annoying so we do that check and this basically checks if the two waves are close enough to meeting um, this also makes it so that uh, you actually do see the band show up uh, because it, it's not going to take a single frame. It's going to take um, a decent amount of time for you to be able to see it. Um, and you are going to see it all the time. Anyway, uh, if we pass this epsilon check type thing, I guess is what you call it, uh, then we get into this nested if statement. It's a little cursed seeing if statements in a shader, but um, anyway. Then what we do is we check the y-coordinate of the texture coordinate passed in from Unity, and we check if it's within the range of band start and band end. If it is, then, well, I lied to you. Those aren't white bands. They are actually bands of color inversion. So effectively, it's like doing this, but on a certain vertical region of the screen. And the reason I did it that way is because when you're at night in the game, you're going to see the white bands, and they're going to contrast really well against the background of the game. But when you're in daytime, you might not see them because the bloom might get in the way, the bright desktop background might get in the way, websites might get in the way, and stuff like that. I basically want it to be really obnoxious when those bands show up, but subtly, which is why they are tied to time, and they don't show up automatically. Um, so, yeah. Um, let me show you guys what it looks like if I disable the ability for it to flash, which we can basically do with this if statement, oring the result of the epsilon check with true. And if I hit save on that, it's going to immediately, um, it's going to immediately apply to the shader, and you're going to see that there's this white, this strip of inverted colors oscillating up and down the screen. And um, you can, if you zoom in on it, you're going to notice that very frequently it's changing thickness. It's kind of hittery, if I'm being honest. But that's not, that's not a frame rate issue. That's it constantly changing thickness, and I might actually slow down that oscillation because it's kind of a little bit, um, shall I say, um, a little bit distracting like that. So maybe what I might do is divide time by 60. Let's see what that does. Now... I think I just made it took an hour to add, to oscillate. Maybe don't do that. Um, <laughs> that is really weird. I don't know why it's not having an effect. Um, <laughs> haters, everybody. Uh, they are very difficult to work on, um, but, yeah, um, 
Okay. Uh, let's see what else could be going on there. I guess it's fine the way it is. Uh, the point is you have this this band of color going down the screen, and it it, it could probably look a little cooler if I'm if I'm not being honest, or if I'm being honest. Sorry, I don't know what to do with it though. Um, I I think it's a neat effect to start with, but I'm not I'm not an artist. I'm not a hater programmer. Uh, you can probably tell if you are a hater programmer that I dog crap at writing haters, but. Um, nonetheless, I think it's a neat effect. It can be a little distracting, but you can see it working, and now you guys know what's going under the hood, and yeah, hope you learned something. Um, it does definitely change thickness. I can see it, whether it be because it is actually changing thickness, or just the way my eyes work, and persistence of vision, and all that stuff with the flashing. It definitely works. You can tell it's a glitch effect, and it looks very similar to how Xorg looks to me right now. So I'm proud of how it looks. I just don't know what direction to take it in, and I guess I would like some ideas from you guys. Anyway, what do you guys think of this so far? Does it look cool? Is it something you'd turn off? Because yes, I will be adding a setting to turn it off, don't worry. I just haven't gotten that far yet, and it's not going to be an ever-present thing in the game. It's just going to be in certain situations where I want to give it and give you the impression that your system's kind of dying. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Or this video, as always, I'm a Michael. Even though everyone calls me Richie, if you like what I do and want to support what I do, there's the Patreon link in the description below. Uh, there's always the subscribe button, even though YouTube is weird and I don't know why. I get recommended things that I'm not subscribed to at all, and then don't get recommended things that I am subscribed to, and you know, that might happen to you too, doesn't matter, just click the button, because it's fun to click, I guess. But anyway, I uh, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, and holy crap are my eyes done for right now. I looked too much at graphing calculators.